In this tutorial, I will show you how to graphically select the input data range to be fitted using the nonlinear curve fitter. Let's import a sample ASCII file. Right click to create a scatter graph. The graph just created includes multiple data plots, but only the first data plot, signal 1, is active, meaning automatically picked up as input when an analysis dialog such as the nonlinear curve fitting tool is opened. To fit the large peak on the left side of the second data plot, signal 2, you can graphically select this range as input using the regional data selector tool. With this region of data selected as my input, I can then select Analysis, Fitting, Nonlinear Curve Fit. In the dialog that opens, I choose Gauss as my function. The fit line is drawn only for the range selected. If I go to Data Selection, and I look at the input range. We can see that the dialog automatically picked up from the graph window. I can click Fit to finish the fitting. I'm not going to switch to the report sheet right away so that we can stay on the graph and view the graph. Note the analysis markers, marking the range that the analysis was performed on. These markers, as well as the green lock that appears in the upper left of the graph, can be used to change parameters. Left click and you'll see the change parameters, which will reopen the analysis dialog. Let's continue by creating a new graph. This is just a reminder message telling you that graphs are created from templates. We don't need to show this again. By default, it's always the first data plot in the layer, which is the active one. The first data plot that appears in the legend is the active data plot. Let me reopen the fitter. Again, we'll choose Gauss as our function. When I go to data selection, you'll see that it automatically chose signal 1, the active data plot, as our input. So when you have a graph active, the active data plot will be recognized as input when you open the dialog and we see the fit curve drawn. This fit curve is just a result of the function Gauss and the initial parameter values that you see here. No iterations have been performed yet. Once I'm in the dialog, if I wish to reassign my input, I can do that by clicking on the right arrow here next to range 1. Let me go ahead and move this so you can see the flyout. And we can choose plot 2, signal 2. Notice right away that the fit curve is redrawn on that second data plot. Let's go ahead and hit fit to fit that curve. Again, we'll stay on the graph here. In this case, we fit the entire data plot, so there are no analysis markers marking a subrange of the data. But after fitting the entire range of signal 2, you may want to update the fit just to fit a part of the curve. You can see that there are two peaks, this large one and this smaller one over here. If we wish just to fit the larger one on the left, like we had done earlier in the tutorial, what we can do is to reopen the fitter and update this fit curve without doing a brand new fit, we just left click on the lock and choose change parameters. The NL fit dialog reopens. I go to data selection, click on the arrow next to range 1. Let's move the dialog over here so we can see the flyout and then choose Select Range from Graph. 
the nonlinear curve fitting dialog will automatically be minimized and the cursors will be drawn on the beginning and the end of the data plot. I can click to drag these to set the range. Once I have my range set, I can click this button here, which will reopen the nonlinear curve fitter. And then to finish the fitting, I can click the Fit Until Converged button. You will find that the new fit curve is now only over the selected range and it fits the baseline better. The old fit curve is still visible for comparison, but as soon as I click OK, the old fit curve is gone and is replaced with a new partial range fit curve. And again, we see those analysis markers. This concludes the nonlinear curve fitting tutorial. Thank you for watching.